Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Sundays with the Cherry on Top. I'm your host Cherry. Today we are in New York City in Harlem on 125th Street and we're going to the Apollo, y'all. I'm sitting with Camilla Forbes, the executive producer of the Apollo Theater. She's not only that, she's my friend, and she agreed to sit down with me out of her busy schedule, so I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. And for those of those people out there and me, I really am genuinely interested in what that title yeah. entails. Um, so what the title entails is I, th I think all of the creative programming that happens here at the Apollo. <laughs> That happens here on our main stage, on our sound stage. Um, that happens here in our education programs. Um, we have programs um, that are going across the cities as well, nice. um, national programs as well. So it's kind of overseeing all that, you know, um, overseeing what's happening here in the next week, in the next month, but also um, what I think is one of the most exciting portions of what I have to do is visioning out five, ten years from now of who as an institution do we want to be mm -hmm. and what's the national impact that we ultimately want to have on the cultural landscape. And what do you see that growing when you say five, ten years? Yeah. What if you Drop me like one or two gems that you see sure. for your vision. Well, well, I mean, here's the thing, you know, uh, the Apollo is an 85-year-old institution. 85. But but we've been operating as a nonprofit performing arts institution in, in the last 10 years. Okay. Right? So we're still young in that respect. Mm -hmm. But um, as being one of the largest African American performing arts institutions, we have a responsibility and an opportunity to make a huge um, um, and even larger impact, I think, on the performing arts landscape. When I think about that, as far as what does that mean, is that we become and, and really make a stamp as the prominent um, African American performing arts institution across the country. Oh, I love right? that. And I'll be my friend leading it, y'all. Where Ooh. the best in class uh -huh. artists come here yeah. to and, and, and consider their home. Let's go into vision five, ten years from now. Let's go into next year. What is 2018 looking yeah. like for you? What's the season going to be? So we're in the midst of the 2017-18 season. Mm -hmm. So um, there's some exciting things that are coming up. Um, and, you know, this particular season that we're in kind of speaks to the times that we're living in mm -hmm. as well, sort of these very uncertain times. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you and I have talked uh, we, about We were right? talking about this, yes, at 45. You don't say his name. You don't say his name. I almost see. We've had a big focus around social justice. Oh, nice. We've opened the season with a work called We Shall Not Be Moved, mm -hmm. um, which was an opera that, that reflected back on the MOVE organization incident that happened in 1985 yeah. in Philadelphia, right? On our um, own soil. On our own soil, the over-policing of mm -hmm. our communities, hint, hint, this yeah. is something that still goes on today, yes. right? Um, 20 years later. Um, and, and fast forwarding, you know, February we'll be celebrating the the protest music of um, from the 60s with a with piece called Soundtrack 63. Oh, I love a that. A musical exploration yes. of protest music from 63 now up to Black Lives Matter. And that's going to be 2018. And that's a 2018, February 2018. Oh, nice. Okay. Then in the spring, we are doing a work, um, a theatrical staging of a work by ta -Nehisi Coates. Oh, I saw that article. Okay, yeah, that's amazing. You ready? I did not perish in the agony of not knowing. I was not jailed. I had proven to myself that there was another way beyond the schools and the streets. It's an opportunity to take, I think, one of our, um, uh, you know, prominent thought leaders, mm -hmm. you know, today, mm -hmm. um, taking his words and um, and really being able to give them a different kind of life. Um, well, how did that happen? Because you planted the seed for that. Mm -hmm. Is it something where you were seeking him, he was seeking you? Or how did that happen? So, you know, um, I was taken by the book. Okay. Um, but I'm, I've always been a big fan of ta work. Yeah, I see. Like, and, I, and I knew I wanted to do something with 
this next upcoming book and I didn't know what yet mm -hmm. and after reading it then it hit me mm -hmm. it was like this idea of how do we encompass um, um, how, how do we have an opportunity to kind of share this very vulnerable writing, mm -hmm. um, but this very kind of global and um, universal topic that, that that should be shared with masses of audiences? Yeah. Um, and and so that's sort of where the concept of like a kind of celebrity theatrical staged reading kind of came about. Wow. Um, I always come back to a Nina Simone quote, which is that art is always supposed to imitate the life of today. And this play does that in such an amazing and large way. I can always count on Victoria not to write a small play. So how did you get into the producing and the directing? Where did that love come from? Did you come from an artistic family? Or is it something that you found along the way? You know what, I think I found it along the way. Um, I didn't come from, well, I'll say this. Um, artistic family in that my family encouraged the okay. cultural arts. They were big fans. Mm -hmm. I went to theater all the time. Okay. Um, one of the first theaters I remember shows I fell in love with was Once on the Silent. Oh, wow, which is revived on Broadway right revived, now. Right? Ironically, so you, right? You're going to go see that, obviously. I'm definitely going to yeah. go see that. I won't be there to guide your way to braid your hair or dry your tears as, as we have, have done these many years. And then in high school, I was directing and producing work that I wanted to see. I, I wrote because I didn't see work that kind of spoke to me. Mm -hmm. um, so you give a need where the need is. Where the need is, okay. that's exactly mm -hmm. it. And I think that's where producing came out of, mm -hmm. right? To say, okay, well, clearly there's gaps that need to be filled. Um, there's an audience here that needs to be spoken to, that needs to be cared for. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I, and I think that's where the interest came from. And is that how, how the hip hop theater festival That's exactly how the hip hop so theater festival So how did that start? Tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> The Hip Hop Theater Festival started in 2000. Kenny Hodge and Clyde Valentine were going to produce Sarah Jones for an 11 week run downtown at PS122. For two weeks out of the 11 week run, they decided to invite folks from all around the country who were working in this same sort of hip hop and theater aesthetic. That's how the festival was born. Well, I think it, you know, the idea around hip hop theater was, was really born, I think, for me out of college. I studied theater at Howard University, mm -hmm. and, and, and it was a wonderful experience. And, and wonderful because of two things, you know, our classics that we learned were um, black classics, mm -hmm. right? Nice, it was yeah. like. That's the, that's the beauty of going to HBCU. Absolutely. Yes. You know, we learned Douglas Turner Ward, yeah. we learned Adrian Kennedy, mm -hmm. like those were the foundations in the rock. We learned Marcus Wilson. Yeah. But also going to going to college and, and, and theater, particularly studying theater at a time when I was also looking for sort of my generational voice reflected. Mm, nice. um, hip yeah. hop was a big love for me. Mm -hmm. um, I was in love with language. Mm -hmm. um, studied Shakespeare. Studied the classics. Like so, there was there was that love of of, of language and. Um, but I wasn't seeing that reflected also in even in the African American theater landscape. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there was a very kind of con um, it was an interest in me about like converging. Our longest ongoing festival still happens at Washington D.C. and is in residence at the Kennedy Center. Oh, nice! That's but we also started to transition out of a place. You know, the festival transitioned out of a place to support artists in a deeper way. Um, so we rebranded to High Arts. Oh, okay. And um, High Arts is now in residence in the East in East Harlem okay. at um, PS um, One Twenty Two, mm -hmm. um, and has a developmental space there. Love that. Mm. Oh, this is watching my friend, y'all. See, you know, like the it's like you have the tree, the cherry tree, and the little tri cherries, and like. All the branches are connected, and she's one of my connections. Ooh, the cherry that I, that tree. I, yeah, the cherry tree that I just, I love. I, I just, I am in awe with everybody that I talk to because I'm just, I see how blessed I am to be surrounded by people who are planting seeds and just making sure that black people have a voice on this planet. That's why I created the show. And so I just want to say, you know, thank you so much for taking the You're time. So and, I mean, and so before we go, like, what I, I want, what I establish with each show is, um, the cherry pick great okay and so it's anything that you find well you know but the Apollo could be a cherry pick for you because yeah. you're already doing it but the, yeah. the cherry pick is basically for people who are watching the show who may not be aware of you know a new book that's out you know yeah. a Tanashi coat book or 
um, a new movie they need to go see or a black owned restaurant or you know a black owned business that sells yeah. t-shirts or whatever yeah. your cherry pick is so yeah. I just wanted to ask you what if you want to give somebody a shout out or if you have yeah. a cherry pick it could even be your own your own show your season you yeah. but what, what, well, what do you, you know I want I want to um, I, I want to cherry pick the Apollo okay yeah I, I, think that, I mean I could cherry that, pick a few things right? yeah you could do as many cherry okay. picks as you want well you know I want to cherry pick the Apollo you know and or between the world and me you know okay. for, for the the rest of our season um, because I think we're looking to redefine and define ourselves as truly a cultural leader mm -hmm. um, you know in, in the arts landscape and 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 we want people to to, to know the institution is that now yes. um, not just as a legacy institution yes. not just as a museum mm -hmm. not just as a place to kind of play reverence but honestly a place to kind of be engaged today so um, I'd like to share that the Apollo. so the Apollo is a cherry pick um, so how do people get tickets? Sure. Tell, tell uh, ApolloTheater.org. Okay. Uh, tickets are there. Follow us on IG okay. um, and Twitter. Okay. And, and it's all, a, it's Apollo. At Apollo Theater. Okay. So IG, Apollo Theater on Instagram, Twitter. There you go. And you can go to Apollo.org. Yeah. ApolloTheater.org. ApolloTheater.org. And you can get tickets there. There you go. For, the, for 2018, some great things coming up to feed your soul, plant some seeds, and just keep it black. So, yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Cherry. <laughs> so glad you could do this. Oh, thank my God, you. this is my pleasure. You feel as though you're part of the action here mm -hmm. on the stage. Um, okay, I get emotional. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is amazing. I've never been on this side of the Apollo, so I'm just taking it all in. I, have, I mean, I have no words. Usually, that's I, I'm a talker, but not right now. But let's go over <laughs> let's to go the over tree, of tree of hope. So this is this is the tree of hope, right? Yeah. That so many people have rubbed yes. before entering, um, before performing right, on the stage. I can't believe Legend has it, this set outside of a theater further down on Lenox Avenue called the Lafayette Theater, which uh -huh. is no longer in existence. But the Lafayette uh, was a place where a lot of black actors, singers, and performers would go to get discovered. Oh. And there was a tree that stood outside of the Lafayette. So mm. a lot of the casting agents and managers, whenever they needed, you know, a performer, they would go to the Lafayette, and now um, these jet, these folks would be standing under this tree, okay. right? Um, and they called it, you know, the tree of the tree of hope. Mm -hmm. It's a tree of good luck. It brought people hope, prosperity, jobs, mm -hmm. right? Um, so when the Lafayette was being torn down and the tree um, was also being cut down, uh, the host at that time of Amateur Night, Ralph Cooper, said, "We need to get a piece of that tree here." Nice. So he had the forethought, brought a piece of the tree here, so that anytime, even though the tree physically wasn't there, it was always still in the it's community. Still, yes. So people it's always said, here. this is the good luck that I have to rub before I go on the stage. Oh gosh. You know, right? This Something. Is so, so great. many people touch that. Where else can you take us? I love this. Let's, let's go backstage. Okay. So this is our wall of signatures. And uh, oh, Kid Capri. <laughs> you, you will see a lot of very familiar names uh -huh. of people that have come through um, the Apollo. Um, uh, a lot of names that would seem very familiar. I see John Legend, Kid Capri. It's just a reminder, right? Yes. No, I, I love it. Right? Oh my gosh, thank you yeah. so much for this tour. This is so beautiful, guys. Isn't this exciting? This is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> If I could sing, I'm not a singer, but no, this, uh, would be a chance. this would be my chance right now. But I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> what, speaking of singing, do you want to drop some lyrics? Wow. You know she freestyles. Oh wow, Those sixteen <laughs> bars. I don't even. You know what? She can Come drop to some lyrics. Night, you may see me. Okay. How about so that? So that's what we'll do. How Amateur about night. Okay. You never know. You never know. Am I making but a She appearance. can drop some. She can spit. I might drop some bars. She can spit. If y'all show up. Okay, you got to show up. <laughs> Why not? Thank Incentive. you. Incentive. <laughs>